You're watching the Physics Classroom's video tutorial series on Newton's Laws. The topic of this video is Newton's First Law. And here are the two questions we wish to answer in this video. What are the two claims in the one condition that are stated in Newton's First Law? And what does this first law mean when it comes to predicting the motion of an object? Let's get started. Newton's First Law is sometimes stated like this. An object at rest will stay at rest, and an object in motion will continue in motion with the same speed in the same direction when acted upon by a balance of forces. That's the first law in words. Now, if we look at it a little bit more carefully, we'll notice that there's two claims being made. First of all, there's a claim being made for stationary objects, and that claim is that stationary objects will stay put. And then second, there's a claim made for moving objects. Moving objects will continue moving just as they are moving in the same direction with the same speed. These two claims are true provided that this condition exists, provided that the individual forces that act upon the object are balanced. Then we can believe in these two claims. This is a common classroom activity. It's called a water relay race. What you do is you fill a pan filled to the rim with water and you have students race around an oval track paying attention to where they lose the water. You could probably do it yourself if you wanted to. You pause the video, get a pan full of water, go outside, make yourself an oval track and race around it with a pan of water. Make sure you do it far from traffic and down power lines and angry pit bulls and you'll be okay. Come back in and we'll talk about what happened. Here's what you notice would happen. You would notice the water falls out at the, at the start line, at the finish line and at the turns. That's what you observe. Time after time, every student observes one of these things. That's where the water spills over the rim of the container. Why does this happen? Well, the water spills over the rim of the container whenever you try to accelerate the water, whenever you try to change its state of motion or its velocity. It does it upon starting at the, at the start line. The water wants to stay right there at the start line as you speed up the pan. It does it at the finish line. When you try to bring the pan to a stop, the water tends to keep going, spills over the front rim of the pan. And it does it on the turns when you try to change the direction of the water. Water has this tendency to spill out whenever you try to accelerate it. So what conclusions does this lead us to about water? First, it leads us to the idea that water doesn't like to change the way that it's moving. It likes to keep on doing whatever it's doing. Like all objects, if it's at rest, it wants to stay at rest, and if it's moving, it wants to continue moving in that same speed, in that same direction. Water likes to maintain its so-called state of motion. Water has this thing that we call inertia. It's a property of the objects that cause them to resist changes in the way that they're moving. Well, this property called inertia is not just true for water, it's true for all objects. All objects want to keep on doing what they're doing. They all possess this property of inertia, the tendency to resist a change in their state of motion. The idea is that objects that are at rest tend to stay at rest. They resist the change from this at rest state. And objects that are moving at two meters per second to the right want to keep moving at two meters per second to the right and resist a change in this constant velocity state of motion. When all the individual forces that act upon an object are balanced, objects keep on doing what they're doing. They have inertia, a resistance to a change in the state of motion. They just simply don't want to accelerate. So we're back to Newton's first law of motion. And here's another way to put it. The first thing you have to do is ask the question, are all the individual forces acting upon the object balanced? And if the answer to that question is yes, then we're talking Newton's first law of motion. And what we can say is that objects don't accelerate. Their A is equal to zero meters per second squared. Now this, of course, can mean one of two things. First, it can mean that if the object's at rest has a velocity of zero meters per second, it's going to stay at rest. Or it can mean that if the object's moving, maybe its V is two meters per second to the east, then it's going to continue moving with that speed of two meters per second in the direction of east. If the answer to this original question is no, the individual forces on the object 
are not balanced, they're unbalanced, then what we have to conclude is that the objects will accelerate. And the acceleration value, well, we'll talk more about that later, because that's now Newton's second law of motion. Let's not jump ahead of ourselves. So here's some take-home messages. First of all, forces when balanced cause stationary objects to remain at rest. Second, forces when balanced cause moving objects to continue moving with the same speed and in the same direction. Both of these claims could be summarized simply to say, forces when balanced lead to zero acceleration. And our third little bullet point here is that forces when unbalanced cause objects to change their state of motion. Whether moving or at rest, when forces are unbalanced, objects will accelerate. It's at this time in every video that I like to give you an action plan, a way to put this learning into action and sort of make it stick. Before I give you that action plan, I'd like to ask a favor of you. First of all, if you like the video, could you press the like button? If you really liked it, why don't you hit subscribe? Once you subscribe to our channel, why don't you tap on the bell and get notifications when new videos come out? And then finally, there's a place to leave a question or comment down below. Feel free to do so. We'd love to hear from you. Now for the action plan. First, at our website, we have a section called Concept Builders, and students love Concept Builders. Here's three great ones you can try to make this learning stick. We have links to them in the description section. Why don't you tap the link and check out the Concept Builders. Second, if you're a Minds on Physics user, why don't you use app number two? On it, you'll find three modules, and the first one's called Newton's Laws of Motion. And in there, you'll find missions NL1 through NL3. That's three different missions has great practice with Newton's first law of motion, balance and unbalanced forces. Now here's something fun you can try. At our website, we have a series of interactive simulations. One of them is called Racetrack. You have to use a force to guide a car around a racetrack, an oval racetrack. Watch the turns. You can do it. Give it a try. It's a lot of fun. Finally, we have a tutorial at our website. The tutorial is a great way to freshen up on a topic. Those are some things that you can do to solidify your learning. And whatever it is you do choose to do, we wish you the best of luck.